Hey folks, this is your host Pandeep and in today's tutorial I'm going to share a new indicator that I've been developing uh, which is based on the market internals. And now before we get into the details of this indicator, I just want to point out that this is a, a paid indicator that I've developed but the price of this indicator uh, is quite insignificant and hopefully it should not dent anybody's pocket. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, I just want to point this out so that folks who are uh, not interested in looking at a paid indicator can skip this tutorial and I will continue to do um, other tutorials um, that are free and that are educational in nature. So what is really unique about this indicator is that um, it actually gives you information in real time. So a lot of time when people are using indicators like MACD or moving averages, um, or momentum indicators, etc., they always tend to lag. But uh, this is one indicator that gives you information in real time. Uh, think of it as the, uh, you know, the dashboard in your car that's giving you real time information on your speed, uh, you know, how much oil you have, and so on and so forth. Uh, so this is really useful, but it's only relevant if you day trade. Now you can see there's two bottom indicators that I have uh, you know, shown um, on this uh, current page. And uh, the first one is called the uptown volume. And uh, essentially we are looking at like five different markets. So we're looking at the broader NYSE market. We are looking at the broader NASDAQ market. We're looking at the Q's 100. And we're looking at the S&P 500 market as well as the IWM or the Russell 2000 uh, marketplace. Now, um, what these numbers indicate is that when the NYSC volume says is uh, up volume is 20 and the down volume is 79, what it is telling you is that on this day, which is the last trading day, um, which was uh, April the 5th, you had 79% of the volume was flowing into you know stocks that were declining and only 20% volume was flowing into issues um, that were advancing. So it clearly showed you and it's marked in red that this is a day uh, that is trending but it's trending in the downward direction. So in essence you know you want to be looking uh, for more short, short opportunities in this particular market. Now uh, so in order to uh, make these things work, you have to know four symbols, uh, or actually five symbols. The first one is the QQQ. And uh, uh, when we type in the QQQ, it's showing you the uh, uptown volume for uh, the NASDAQ 100. So that's what's depicted in the graph, but uh, uh, on the label at the top, it is showing you uh, how the entire marketplace is behaving, how the five different markets uh, currently are. At the bottom, what you see is the um, advanced decline line. We'll uh, get into that in a, in a moment. Now, when you have this situation where, um, you know, the uh, up-down volume ratio is like 70, 30, and beyond. So this, uh, you know, mark line is 70, this one is 30, and this is showing you the, the red is above the green, therefore, most of the volume or 70, 80% of volume is flowing in issues that are declining. So now this is a QQQ. Now if you type in uh, NDX, it's gonna show you the graph for uh, the broader NYS, uh, broader NASDAQ market, which was also negative. Uh, we look at the SPY, which is the third symbol. And I have explained what these five symbols are and I put them down in the document as well um, that you get once you uh, you know, get the software. As you can see, the SPY market was actually neutral. And the reason it was neutral was because uh, for most part, it was neutral because it stayed inside of this zone, right? But towards the end, it uh, deteriorated and, you know, we had a big sort of drop. So that's SPY. Um, then we have SPX that depicts the, uh, the broader um, uh, NYSE market. And you'll see that it had somewhat of a similar characteristics, right? So it was uh, sort of neutral, and then it started to de deteriorate towards the end. And then finally, we have the IWM, which um, off the bat was negative, right? So it started off uh, with uh, a negative uh, ratio on the up to 
up down volume uh, and then it stayed like that and you can see from here that uh, you could have easily shorted the IWM through the day because this uh, up down volume stayed uh, negative. Now the bottom uh, graph is showing you the advanced decline line and I have uh, shown it for all the markets. You can see the yellow line is for the Nasdaq broader market. The um, cyan line is for the NYSE market. The uh, magenta line is for the SPX. This dashed uh, red line is for the S&P 500. And this green line is for the Q's 100. The reason is because there's only 100 stocks, so it tends to you know stay very close to the uh, zero line. But it's easier to just type in uh, the symbol and it'll actually give you the data. So what it's showing you for uh, yesterday's marketplace, you can see that 85% of the Q issues were declining and only 14% were advancing, right? And uh, uh, the reason in, uh, we get uh, over uh, 100 stocks is actually 101 because Google is, uh, you know, shown twice because of Google, Google and, uh, and Goo, right? So that's why you get, um, over 100. But uh, now for the other markets, we can see we can look at the S&P uh, 500 market and it'll still show you what the advanced decline ratio was for that particular market. And it's showing you that uh, um, out of like the total 500 issues, you know, only 147 were advancing and the remaining 353 was declining. Once you get this kind of a situation, you know that you uh, you shouldn't be trading long. Now, there's clearly some stocks that will trade against the market, and that could be based uh, on the fact that they are, um, you know, trading on news or results or uh, some other positive announcement. And there are clearly some stocks that will always trade against the market, like some of the defensive names. Now, we'll switch back to the QQQs for a minute, and I'll show you uh, that... Uh, two days of data, right? So we'll look at the previous day, right? So this is uh, uh, the day prior, which was uh, Monday. And as you can see, on Monday, the up-down volume was uh, positive, right? So 70, over 70% 70 volume was flowing in issues that was declining. And one of the interesting things that you notice is that the other markets were actually negative. So the IWM, the um, the NYSC, the S&P 500, were trading below the zero line, and then this little green line uh, is for the Q's 100, but you can see the Nasdaq 100 market was actually positive. And so it just gave you a clue uh, early on in the market that, you know, the focus should be predominantly tech stocks for the day, right? Because that's what the QQQ comprises of. And we also could see the 70-30 ratio um, in the in in the uh, queues market and you can see that if you took the trade it pretty much gave you uh, a nice uh, profitable trade if you traded any of the tech stocks and now we can also look at um, you know some of the tech stocks and see how they fared but anything that was a part of the s p uh, of the q100 should have generally done well for the day as you can see apple also did well okay so now uh, the, the, now, yesterday, it was actually uh, a bit of a reverse situation because you can see that the down volume was, uh, you know, almost at 90%. That's an extreme situation, right? So when you get this kind of an extreme situation, when it is, you know, 85 or 90, uh, that kind of level just tells you that it's very little chance for the market to reverse that day because, you know, the overwhelming uh, majority of stocks are trading in the down direction um, and uh, therefore uh, it's best to look for like short opportunities and uh, you know if you had taken the cues and you had shorted the cues it gave you a nice trade so um, what I'll do is I'll just scroll back a little bit but before I scroll back what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the UTS uh, indicator that is the indicator that we use for our trading and I'll show you how well it behaves uh, when these market conditions are aligned uh, one way or the other. So if you give me a moment, I'll, I'll just add that. Uh, now that I've added the indicator, you can see, uh, given the fact that we were already uh, in a negative market or a market that was trending to the downside, um, 
as everything that you can see here was red. So one other thing that I've put together on this is uh, something called the market thrust. And this market thrust is uh, gets colored in either red, yellow, or green. So when it is red, it's trending in the downward direction. Yellow means it's neutral. And then um, green means it's trending in the positive direction. But most important is to pay direction to the advanced decline line, uh, as well as what the up-down volume is on uh, the various uh, marketplaces. Now let's just scroll back and see, so you, you obviously had a good short uh, yesterday, and look at the day prior, because this ratio was uh, trending to the upside. You had a nice positive day if you traded the market. Um, you had another similar situation where the uh, market was trending, but this wasn't uh, overwhelming sort of in the downward side, but nevertheless it worked out because you can see the, uh, you know, some of these marketplaces were actually, you know, positive on the positive, but the Nasdaq was actually trending downwards, right? So it's giving you um, a very good clue as to which market uh, should you be in on that particular day, All right? So now let, let's look at this particular situation. Now, this is actually interesting because you can see the up-down volume stayed inside the 70-30 ratio for, for most part of the day. So therefore, there was no point trading this day, at least in the queues, because it gave you no edge, the market was choppy, and uh, you know any trade that you place would have probably just sort of ended up failing, right? So again, you know this is another good example, right? So now you have uh, a trending market, and you can see here, um, every market, the advanced decline line of every market is positive, right? So when it is positive, you can see that uh, the trade just worked out in your favor, right? Um, so you can sc scroll back and look, and uh, that, that's another good example, right, where the market really, uh, again, was in a trending phase. The queues were nicely up. You got a buy signal, and that buy signal gave you, you know, a, a, a much higher level of confidence for it to work out. Now, obviously, you know, this is not something that's included as part of the study. The only thing that is included is the bottom part. But just by looking at these, uh, you know, you're getting a good sense of what how the markets are doing. Let's take a look at IWM for for example. If you were you know if you trade the um, the small caps, right? And uh, we'll take a look at again uh, yesterday. So look at this situation because the IWM advanced decline line was um, you know uh, negative, right? So more issues were declining at the same time. You know roughly we'll we'll ballpark it about. 80% of the volume was flowing uh, into issues that were declining, and that made the, you know, uh, it made more sense to short these stocks, right? And uh, again, you know, you have a similar situation here. You get a short opportunity, and uh, the up-down volume is again negative, and the advanced decline line is negative. So, in a nutshell, um, you know, this is a fantastic indicator. Uh, to be used uh, in conjunction with whatever else you end up using, but if you use this, it'll help you sort of stay in the right side, in the right direction. Now, again, um, I'll show you this particular example. So, again, when you have a situation where everything is trading inside the 70/30 line, that means it's a neutral market. So, as you can see, if you there was really no edge in this market. If you had taken uh, a trade on the IWM, you pretty much, um, you know, would have chopped out, and uh, you know, it would have been a frustrating day. But 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 by just having these two indicators, you will always be sort of on the right side of the market. So hopefully this helps, and I will see you guys in the next video. And I've put a link in the description uh, where you can get this uh, indicator.